To order your $79 Front Runners Learning Package, which includes a viewer's guide, audio cassettes, workbook, and manual, call Toronto 967-1402. Long distance, call toll-free 1-800-268-1121. In either case, ask for extension 12. This is TV Ontario. How will you manage is next, but first, this message. In module two of your How Will You Manage guide, you'll learn how to clarify expectations your boss and the organization have of you. As a new manager, you may be surprised at the proactive stance suggested. If they want you to do a good job, they'll tell you what they have in mind, right? Wrong. Your TVO guide explains why it doesn't always or even often work that way, and how in spite of that, you can get the information you need to do the job right. In this module, the guide offers a valuable insight into the management perspective, which you can use to help you get the organizational cooperation and resources you need. Well, that's one part of looking before you leap, the module topic. The other parts are assessing your people and building a framework for decision making. The TVO guide suggests strategies for new managers who've risen from the ranks. And it shows how to effectively conduct interviews with your staff. Morale and productivity checklists help you assess the information you're receiving. Well, this kind of information is invaluable to the new manager. Just ask any successful manager who's had to learn the hard way on their own. If you haven't ordered your copy yet, you still can. Stay tuned at the end of this program. We'll show you how. Good morning and welcome to day two of How Will You Manage? Good morning. You, you've been scrambled. I beg your pardon. Yep. We've mixed up the groups so you have a chance to work with somebody else. We'll do that each and every day, okay? All right. So in day one, we looked at the importance of assessing the environment. And what were the key points from day one? Becky? Yes. We discussed the danger in acting before you've completed a thorough assessment. And as a manager, you should wait until you have all the information assembled first. Okay, super. Also, how important it is for the manager to do a self-assessment to understand and uh, acknowledge your own strengths and limitations. Very nice. Okay. Now, we've uh, just done a quick summary of the key steps on the board here. And what we have is clarify the role that you're going to play with your people. Determine the expectations that you have of your people. Assemble information on resources, could be human or otherwise, and collect perceptions. Very important steps. And in day one, we spend some time on the what, and today is the how-to. So we'll practice the skills of assessment. Okay? Next time you're parachuted into a job, you'll have a feel for the place. Now, lastly, we had a key word from day one, and it was... Assess. And there it is on our wall boards. Okay? <laughs> So let's get to work now, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, take a couple of minutes to read this case study. It presents the story of a manager approaching her new position, and it's out of your manual. So I'll hand those out now, and you can get right to work, okay? Three over here, and uh, two here, and uh, three over here. So let's just take a few minutes to look at that, okay? Okay, all set? Piece of cake, eh? <laughs> okay. So each of the individuals in that case study made a pretty fundamental uh, error. Their, their intentions were good, but a lot of time and energy was wasted. Why was that? None of the individuals had a clear idea of their primary function. They were all busy, but they had no focus. Well, where should the focus have come from? The boss. Okay, point one. Uh, know what the boss expects of you. Uh, how do you do that? Well, uh, it would seem pretty logical to talk to the boss. But only if the boss is approachable. I'm not about to rush into someone's office if I think he sees me as insignificant. Well, now, if you think about it a little bit, it's unlikely the boss would have hired you if, if he thought you were insignificant. But that's not to say that your boss is going to be clear about what he wants you to do. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out what he really wanted me to do. Well, why didn't you just ask him? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I went in there and asked for a job description to find there's no job description, and I still don't have one. A job description isn't enough, though. 
What you really need to find out is what your boss expects from you, not just what the job involves. That's right. You, you can't really rely on what's been written and said, okay? What's an unsaid is just as important. You have to know expectations. You have to ask directly. And there's an art there, however. And what kind of questions work? There's the obvious. So you say to your boss, what do you expect from me? Okay, all right. Anybody, any other ideas? Yes, well, you could ask the boss about performance evaluation. How, by what criteria will you judge my work? Well, that's good. There's not much room for leeway there. You go get a straight answer. But right? what if the answer isn't straight? Well, any thoughts on that, anyone? Well, you just have to force the issue. If um, a job description or performance evaluation criteria aren't available, then demand them. Right. Go in and start making demands. Great first impression. <laughs> well, listen, why not offer to write up a set of evaluation criteria for your boss? And at the same time, you could sell him on the need for clarity, so you could best meet his needs and expectations. I think that makes sense. A direct approach. All right. <laughs> well, look, uh, you know, you're going to want some paperwork, and you're going to want a job description and performance appraisal, but if you don't have that, you can go to your boss and offer to put it on, on paper. Have a meeting, uh, have your first meeting with a purpose. I get a predetermined objective. Um, you have to manage up as well as down in this business. Eh? So uh, you're going to have to do some preparation, establishing a purpose, moving to your objective. Um, and I, that's going to be important. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to a role play. And um, with a superior, we're going to practice that one-on-one -on -one skill, okay? So we're going to do preparation, establishment of purpose, movement towards an objective. And you're going to need this skill in a host of situations, all right? So if you'll turn to module two in your manual, and it's close to the beginning, look at the exercise entitled, What Do I Do Now? And let's have a look at those scenarios for a few moments, okay? What do I do now? Have you got it? So what we're going to do is I get you to practice the skills that you've been reading about. And Saria could be the boss, so come on up here. And, uh, uh, Mario, you're Come the on, new buddy. manager. Get down there. Okay. Do it. Do it. Better okay. Good luck. Okay. Academy work. Mike made it. Okay. So you've reviewed the situations uh, as presented in the manual, and the rest of you are going to try to identify those little mistakes, okay? All right. So let's see how the meeting might go. If we find any. Are you ready? Uh, I think so. Okay. Go for it. Sarah, I was wondering if I could have a minute of your time. Sure. What about? Uh, well, minute, minute, uh, uh, stop. You just started. I know, but I think uh, Sarah should have set up a time for the meeting. <laughs> well, maybe she should. Uh, okay. All right, Next. good point. I'll, I'll take care of it. Let's get um, another whirl. <laughs> remember the uh, meeting that we scheduled at 9 o'clock? Is that still all right with you? Sure. What's on your mind? Uh, Paul? Hey, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you, why not? Yeah. The purpose of the meeting hasn't been made clear. Uh, That's a good point. Important yeah. point. Yeah, let's start from there, okay? Okay, let's go. Um... <laughs> As I stated in my memo, I yeah. wanted to clarify some uh, things about my new job. Okay, go ahead. Well, first of all, I'd like to know what you want me to do as the new manager. Um, <laughs> stop. Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, did we not stress the importance of getting to the point? Like, like being the point. clear. Right? I think uh, Maria should tell her what she needs. All right. Yeah, What's Come on. Need? Good input. Be a man. Okay, Say good what input. I need. Okay, okay um, carry on. Carry on. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll do that again. <laughs> what I'd like to, what I'd like to uh, do is state my needs as the new manager in, in the job. Um, I want to take a look at the schedule. I'd like to take okay, a look. Hey, all right. Good stuff. <laughs> all right. Thanks to Bob and Kathy. Those were great role plays. All right. So it gives the, you know, a sense of the importance of practicing, but not just in training. You practice at home with your peers, practice with your partner at home, maybe, okay? You have to be bold and persistent and restate your requests. Uh, it's your responsibility to ask for that information. Get your boss's expectations of you clearly understood. It's really important. And it's not just a one-way process. Let's take a break, okay? Good. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, we looked at the importance of determining the expectations and the use of effective and persistent communication skills. Now, that's especially in relation to the bus. But uh, who else could you be spending time with up front? Well, as you all know, I've had trouble with the people I've left behind since I've been promoted. Just a few too many noses at a joint. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just don't like it anymore. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. That's not an easy situation. Let's take a look at what they do at the Centerville Feed and Seed store. And away we go. One of the management trainees at the Feed and Seed store was Bob Badger. 
He'd been hired at about the same time as Bill Bieber. Unlike Bill, Bob had no university degree. He'd worked his way up through the ranks. Bob was widely acknowledged as a hard worker and was well-liked by his peers. Management potential, said Pete Snow. So Bob was put in charge of the company's motor pool. Bob was bound and determined to make sure the vehicles were maintained like never before. And he was determined to be a popular manager, not a dictator like the guy he was replacing. But remaining a good old boy can get out of hand. When things went wrong, Bob would do the work himself. That seemed easier than criticizing his staff. Bob's days started getting longer and longer. His organizational time as a manager suffered because of the time he spent covering for his friends. Pretty soon he was working double shifts. Details began to fall through the cracks. That's when Pete Snow decided to step in. True to form, Pete's message was short and simple. As a manager, you have to show people how to improve themselves. Give them direction. Don't try to do it all yourself. Remember, a manager has to manage. Okay, all right. So, so uh, what did that video uh, tell you, uh, Mario? I guess that you have to shed some of your worker habits once you get into management. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. You've got to be a leader to manage other people's work. Yeah, that is, it seems it's true. You do have to make some kind of a break. At the very least, you have to tell or explain your new roles to your former peers. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't set yourself up to be used. I mean, the boss is the boss, and he has to tell it to his people. Oh, come on, Paul. I, mean, I know plenty of managers who get their point across without playing the heavy. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. No, 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 no. All you got to do is sit down and talk to the people one-to-one, -one, tell them about the situation. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. You're both making very good points. The boss has got to be the boss, all right? But not necessarily through words, through actions, okay? Exactly. All right? And, and try not to immediately distance yourself from the situation. I think okay? George is right. You have to sit down with your people one-on-one, -on -one, clear the air, tell them that things are going to be slightly different now that you're the manager, but that changed relationship shouldn't affect the friendship. Right. Easy to say, but not so easy to do. I faced resentment, jealousy, and then I had people coming in late who never had in the past. Mm. So what'd you do about it? I sat them down and I asked them why. Huh? Well, I made sure to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, and it worked. No one comes in late anymore, and one guy even came to me and told me he was just doing it to test me. <laughs> Can you believe it? He was trying to see if he could get special privileges. <laughs> well, anyway, that nonsense is over with now, and uh, everyone is coming in on time, so I guess you could say I passed the test. Yeah, right there. All right. Okay, so yeah, it, it really highlights the importance of one-on-one -on -one to clarify the roles and expectations. And, and actually, there's a summary of those one-on-one -on -one skills in your module two in your book, okay? Let's take just a couple of minutes to review those, and because they're really important points, okay? In day one, we had a key word, which was? Assess. And in day two, we have three key words, the really? first letters of which are C-O-P. Mm -hmm. COP, great acronym, eh? All you employees, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, actually, police officers have skills that we might draw on in this case. They're always looking for clues. They're all trying to uh, recruit or to uh, create the large picture. Eh? So these uh, letters each present a concept, and we're probably close to the C at this point. Let's see if we can get it. How about convert, uh, getting those around you over to your side? <laughs> Not bad. Any others? I'd say that it's consult. Yes. OK, yeah, that's real it. good. Uh, the need for the manager to speak both with his right. boss and with those he works with. OK, super. That's what I was looking for. What you're doing is you're going to consult people to get their views, to get clear expectations. Now, we're going to do the other words later, right? But what about your new staff? Are you going to call them in one by one? Any ideas on that, yeah. Becky? Well, that might take a while, uh, especially if the department is big. Mm -hmm. I would probably talk to them in a group as a whole, mm -hmm. at least tell them who I am and what they can expect, uh, both in the short and long okay. term. Yeah, to clarify roles, to clarify expectations, to dispel fear of the unknown. Oh, right? wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> the first rule you gave us says don't do anything until you're thoroughly acquainted. Sure, right? And, and I don't think we want to back down from there. What we're looking for is for them to get a sense of your type of management style, not a life history. Just clarify your roles for your people, okay? Okay, can you, yep. can you clarify for myself and maybe everybody mm -hmm. else here? You're suggesting that we get up, say, myself, get up in front of yeah, a large sure. group of people. Uh -huh. What are we saying exactly? Well, Bob, why don't we try it? Why don't you come out and give it a whirl? 
No, I just want an answer. As if we were your employees. We want Bob. All right, my employees. You're all fired. That's the guy here. That's the way to start the day off. Okay, first thing, first thing would be good morning. How's morning. everyone doing? Good morning. morning. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself to all of you. My name is Bob Scott, and I'm your new manager. And I'm looking forward to meeting each and every one of you over the next couple of days and weeks, whatever. And I think we're going to make a pretty darn good team together. Thank you. I'm not asking any more questions. That's it. No more questions for me. No, no, no. So short and sweet. Any reactions? How did it feel? It was wonderful. Well, it was short. But, uh, <laughs> but some good things came out of it. Um, I'm glad to see, to see that uh, he's going to be speaking with each of us. Okay. Any improvements we could bring? Um, well, you could have said a bit more about his plans. Uh -huh. Maybe something about his, his ideas about management. A little sure. bit more than I'll be talking to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. and like what we were talking about the other day. He could have said something like, um, as a manager, I'm in the need-satisfying business. Or... I want you people to have a say in making changes around here, something like that. Okay, and you don't want to be a direct threat to your people, the, imp the impression of cutbacks and layoffs and so on. You don't want to leave that impression. You want to weigh your words carefully, even in the context of that first meeting. Okay. And, and the image is important. I mean, you don't want to intimidate your employees. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe if you had sat down when you were in the front of the room, maybe that might have made a difference. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sure. What you want to show and tell that you're approachable. Have an open-ended session. Get their input. Well, let's try a couple of practice sessions, and uh, Sarah, you're up next. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, once again, real improvements come through practice, eh? And we want to stress the importance of giving people the opportunity to speak or ask questions. You have to be a good listener if you want to be an effective manager. Okay? Some summary points. People need to see you as on their side, and that you're working on their behalf. And so, your prime role is to make their work environment more efficient. So you're a developer, not just a manager. You need to show interest in their futures. So clarify roles and expectations are important steps for the new manager. We've identified four steps and we've done two. Clarify expectations and listen to people. And we have a third step, which is to assess the resources. What do we mean by that? Um, I think it means analyzing the hard data, which indicates how the department is performing. Mm -hmm. um, for example, reviewing budgets, uh, sales performance numbers, productivity information and computer databases. Good. That's all high quality information and it's good input for decision making. What else? Uh, Paul? Kathy? Um, resources to me means the people I work for. So one of the first things I did is I went straight down to personnel and I read the files on my staff. Mm. Okay. Yes, I did. First I started with the key personnel and then as I had time I went back and I read the others. Okay. And what information were you after? I was looking for pay records, uh, sick days, performance appraisals, any pertinent info. So then you can figure out who to keep an eye on? I don't know about you, Kathy, but uh, I wouldn't want to be evaluated by some manager on the basis of a personnel file. Well, okay. Great. Right. 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 Okay. Both well, Kathy and Mario have good points. Uh, while the file information is important, we also have some other kinds of information that are important. The results of effective one-on-one -on -one with your people. Two places, two sides to collect information. Hard data, files, budgets, computer reports, and so on, and getting information from people. So let's hear what our managers have to say about the importance of the assessment procedure. Is that? Yeah. I think the most important thing for a new manager on the job uh, when they start off is to observe the people that are already in positions very, very critical to observe and evaluate what kind of skills that the people in place either have or need to have. Uh, I think the, the, the next uh, step would be to treat your people fairly. Uh, treat them like they're important. They are important. Uh, there is no business without them. Uh, if you think there is, send them all home and you try running the business yourself. So I think it's very, very important to get to know your people uh, observe their characteristics, and then work with them and try to motivate them. First of all, get to know the people who are reporting to you and establish you know, some rapport with them. 
and I think very important, certainly a mistake I made amongst a lot of people, is realize you don't have to have all the answers. As a manager, it's acceptable to say, I don't know. You know more about it than me. What do you suggest? A manager's job is working through other people. And it's very important to get to know them, not just as workers, but also as people, and to try to understand what their strengths and their weaknesses are, um, and how uh, he can fit into their lives, or she can fit into their, their lives, and help them grow and meet the corporate uh, goals. OK. All right. Well, that certainly reinforces the need to concentrate on the people side of management. Now, a lot of new managers underestimate the power of intuition. You know, what you perceive is usually correct when you're out talking to staff and working with staff. It really is. MBWA? Yes. Management by wandering around. It's a real buzz term in popular management literature. Mm. You know, I've noticed that the managers that are best at MBWA are also the ones who tend to have the BMWs. <laughs> no, 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 Maybe it's really. just me, but that's what I'm Really, uh, really it's, it's viewed as a management style, and it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Okay. Well, the fact is that the most effective managers are generally the ones who know what's happening at all levels of the organization. Get out among the staff, find out what's going on. Now, yesterday, I gave you some homework, remember? It was to assess effective and ineffective management practices here at the training center. My guess is that there's going to be some perceptions in there, okay? And I'd like to get your reports at this, at this time, all right? And who's first? Okay, we covered the outside training facilities in the parking area, and we spoke with some of the employees to see what their views were, and for the most part, they're all pretty keen and eager about working there. Then we thought we'd stroll about the premises and, and see this, how it looked, mm -hmm. and we found it was very clean and very organized. Mm -hmm. Very clean. Mm -hmm. Extremely so, and everybody seemed on the whole to uh, love the operation. Okay, yeah. super. That's very thorough. Okay. Notice that uh, they talked to the staff, they walked around the operation, and they've got high quality perceptions. They even have the view of the customers, and that's just excellent. Now, well, the next group is, and yeah. Kathy. Okay. Yeah. We decided to cover the housekeeping staff. And first of all, we went down and we, we found that the questionnaire was the best hope of all, and that by having a look at the answers from the head of housekeeping, the housekeeping staff, management, and the guests, we were able to get a pretty good idea of how the whole organization works and how effective it is. Okay, wow. <laughs> really marvelous. Okay, and if finally, George. Oh, yes, well, we assessed the kitchen and the dining room area. We did things a little bit differently. We decided to go and have dinner. <laughs> it's kind of a casual approach, yeah. And, but it worked well because, um, as Jean says, we experienced the food and the uh, service and oh. the environment. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that way we could see how everyone interacted with uh, each other. Okay, all right. Well, hands-on experience. There's nothing like it, eh? You get the feel of the place. Now, did you get as far down as the dishwashing area there? Uh, no, no, no. That's for the workers. I'm management. Okay, thank you all, and, uh, and you too, George. Uh, good observations, and uh, those feelings about a place really give you a much better insight. Now, let's get some key steps to uh, gathering perceptions up on the board here. And what we have is to be a good listener. Okay? To get those perceptions, you have to be able to sponge up the stuff. Gather perceptions continually. It's not a one-shot deal. You have to keep at it. And that'll allow you to set some trends. You can see the trends in the perceptions. And finally, get involved in what the workers are doing, what your people are doing to get those perceptions right. So that's what uh, consultation means, eh? To determine expectations, assemble information, clarify roles, and gather perceptions. Now, the uh, O and the P part of our key words, C-O-P, are part of the next step, okay? And let's see if we can get closer to it by having a look at the Centerville Feed and Seed oh, Store. Good. Okay, are we ready? Horsha Pigeon time. <laughs> Horsha Pigeon was another management trainee at the Feed and Seed Store. She'd been with the store for several years, since graduating from a local community college. Porsche's enthusiasm and hard work paid off, and Pete Snow appointed her manager of the store's grocery department. Now, Porsche was a real people pigeon. She always made sure she knew what her boss wanted, and she was careful to invite input from her staff. She had mountains of input and lots of ideas, and heaped them one after another onto a huge to-do pile. In no time at all, Portia was working till midnight.
trying to get through her pile. Of course, her plans for reorganization were at the bottom of the pile. The harder she worked, the less progress she made, and she never could get to those plans. Until one day, Pete Snow noticed the bags under Portia's eyes. When he asked about the reason for the long hours, Portia pointed to the backlog of work. Lo and behold, Pete's message was short and simple. Smiling, he pointed out, it's not how hard you work, but how smart you work. You have to plan the big picture before you can tackle the small details. You know what I noticed, Paul? Portia Pigeon has crow's feet. <laughs> Just what I know. Apart from, okay, apart from that, what's the essential message behind the sequence? Uh, that it's not enough to assemble all of the information. Okay. If you have right. to get the information and organize it in an efficient manner, mm -hmm. and then sift through the information to determine the key issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's well, supposed to be a badger. That was the main thing. Portia started too many things without any focus at the same time. Absolutely. That's right. She needed to sit down at the end of the day and plan what had to be done. And if we go back to our key concepts, I'd wager that the second word is organized. She's got it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. She is smoking right. again. See, O, oh, the O is organized. And uh, really, we talked about the importance of being organized in day one and the damage to the credibility that it can do if you're not organized as a manager. You saw more damage in the animation. Okay, so organize, and we're going to give you the third one. The P is prioritize that's our third concept okay now how do you determine your priorities well I would go back to making a list mm -hmm. when my list of to-dos is completed I would then go back and uh, prioritize my mm -hmm. activities into things that have to be completed immediately and those that can wait that's marvelous must be like this <laughs> okay <Whoa. laughs> All right. basic to-do list priority little check mark and what you do is take care of the A's first, the ones that you have to do, right? Now, these other ones are either going to become A's or they're going to be struck off the list, okay? That sounds fairly easy. That's how I used to organize when I was a homemaker. Sure. Now, of course, it is easy, but it's also easy to forget. You have to be consistent. You have to review the list on a daily basis. Change your priorities as required. Now, there's more in the manual under today's tabulator on different systems of uh, managing, prioritizing your time. It gives you an idea what diary organizers are available, but the real key to them is to use them. Now, let's have a look at those for a few moments. We're coming to the end of day two. Wow. All right. And we've got some homework. Okay. Ah. This is a questionnaire. You have to apply a different management technique to different situations. Okay. okay. So there, and Jean, thank you very much. Okay. We had some key learning words, key learning points for today. Let's see if we can pick them up again. What was our C word? Consult. Consult. Okay, very nice. And our O word? Organize. Organize. Very nice. And our P word? Prioritize. 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 Okay. Again, some fairly key learning pieces. And we built on day one, uh, and its concept was... Yes, <laughs> all right. And there we looked at the importance of taking the time to consult with your boss, to consult with your employees, to learn about expectations of you, and you clarify your expectations of them. And today the specifics were on how to organize and prioritize in the context of making changes and supporting your, your, your staff, okay? So uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of confidence and understanding to survive those first critical few weeks as a new manager and uh, give you the steps to grow in your new assignment. Now, I hope you're ready because we're going to move on to day three of How Will You Manage? Okay, right. yeah. see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you.
To order the $39 learning package for this new course, please have your Visa or MasterCard ready and call Toronto 967-1402.